Julie would like to know, is AMH or FSH helpful in determining fertility? Okay. So the question is, what about AMH and FSH? Or, these are hormone tests that are often performed. Are they, are they helpful in determining your fertility? Well, AMH stands for anti-malarian hormone, and FSH stands for follicle-stimulating hormone. The AMH uh, level is uh, an indication from your ovary, really, of how many antral follicles you have. It's a very indirect indication of it. And uh, if the AMH is high, that means you've got a lot of eggs. If the AMH is low, you don't have many eggs. AMH is very popular because it's a simple lab test. Uh, but frankly, we found that if the ultrasonographer knows what they're doing, then the antral follicle count is a better uh, evaluation of your ovarian reserve than AMH. So AMH is sort of okay. The FSH level is really not very valuable. The FSH level goes up when your number of eggs goes down, but it remains flat as your ovarian reserve goes down over many, many years and only begins to go up when your ovarian reserve is extraordinarily low. So we always get a day three FSH. Uh, we always get LH and estradiol, estrogen levels. But frankly, you should not uh, evaluate your fertility based on the day three FSH. Uh, a low day three FSH and a low estradiol at the same time on day three of your cycle usually means an adequate ovarian reserve, but it's not very it's not very accurate. So an AMH is a little more accurate than that, but most accurate and not changing at any time during your menstrual cycle is the antral follicle count. That is on ultrasound, looking at the small follicles, the follicles that started four months ago from your resting reserve in your ovary, over four months to reach the stage where they're sensitive to the hormones that will stimulate ovulation. Those antral follicles are proportional to your total number of eggs and we can see it with our own two eyes and it's more reliable than any of the hormone tests if you're going to choose one test.